We have a number of special guests in here. Uh, Judge Korpinski is over uh, there by uh, sitting in the front there. Mike Malachuk, president of Bologna. Um, and uh, a few others that I... Here is a commander of the Post 152, uh, Joe Lechner. So we thank you very much for your attendance uh, over here. As usual, I probably omit a few. Uh, that should have been mentioned, so please forgive me. And now it is my pleasure uh, to introduce to you our main speaker, Judge Raymond Pianca. Of course, we at Bologna, we do not need uh, to have his introduction. Judge Pianca is well known for in the Polish community. He is very proud of his Polish heritage, and we see him at many Polish events in the Cleveland area. You will find his bio in the program that we have passed out. I just wanted to stress his interest and commitment to the Polish community. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor to present to you Judge Raymond Kemp. Thank you, Gene, and uh, greetings from the Cleveland Municipal Court Housing Division. Hopefully I won't see any of you there as defendants in court, but I want to, uh, of course, give Greetings to our Reverend Clergy, Father Cousy, the Honorable Tony Brancatelli, the Honorable Judge Diane Karpinski, uh, the veterans, uh, Polonia Foundation, and all of you who make a Polonia great and keep that ember of Polish freedom alive. Now, it's my great honor to reflect just a few minutes about the impact of this important day on freedom defined by the Polish-Lithuanian Constitution of 1791 the world's second written constitution. Our own freedom as Americans who live in a free society is defined by the American Constitution, which was the first written constitution. But as Polish Americans, we have a great legacy because of the Constitution of May 3rd, 1791. Now that constitution only was enforced for 18 months and three weeks. The memory of that constitution that we observe today is recognized as a progressive document for all generations, and it helped cleave Polish aspirations for an independent and just society alive. The current Polish constitution, which Poland is operating on now, was passed on May 25, 1997, almost two centuries after its famous predecessor. The May 3rd Constitution was a milestone in the history of law and the rise of democracy. Poland and the United States, although geographically a distance, displayed notable similarities in their constitutions. Irish statesman Edmund Burke described the May 3rd Constitution as the noblest benefit received by any nation at any time. That Constitution recognized the balance of powers between the three branches of government. It guaranteed tolerance and freedom of religion. You know, many times in the history, as polls, when this gathering in honor of May 3rd would have been prohibited, and we would have been arrested for being here, we would have been detained or arrested for singing the Polish national anthem in Poland. That 123 years uh, from the point that Poland lost its status as a country, the flame and ember of Polish constitution lived on. Now, despite the fact that people may have been arrested, detained, the, from the point of 1791 on, that constitution has been regularly observed, although sometime using the secret secrecy of the Polish trade of Ketman that was defined by Czesław Miłosz in the captive mind. Ketman is the practice of keeping a belief alive but submerged in outward appearances, particularly in the light of totalitarian government. But the passion of the freedom of that constitution was so important that it is an ember that has burned in the hearts of Poles throughout its history. Now this venue, this place, is a fitting place for Polonia for Cleveland's Poles and Erie's Poles to rejoice in the freedoms given by that Constitution. The Polish community had the passion to build a monument here 
to the defender of that Constitution, Tadeusz Kosciuszko, who we're going to honor in a few minutes. Now, it's hard to believe that there was controversy in the Polish community. The Polish community was split in 1905, uh, but Father Kuzi, there was another priest, Father Francis Kuliszewski, who was a builder priest, just like you, who, who used his leadership to make sure that that statue was built here in the center of cultural Cleveland. He also built the building of the shrine of St. Stanislaus, as well as founding Sacred Heart of Jesus Parish and the Immaculate Heart of Mary Parish. You know, and there's a saying that you cannot make an omelet unless you break some eggs. Well, he broke a lot of eggs. In fact, he was excommunicated for a period of time. Uh, but during this period of excommunication, he fought. Uh, there were lawsuits filed to keep this monument from being built here of Kosciuszko. But finally, the Polish community came together. And uh, finally, uh, Father Kosciuszko was admitted back into the church. And we're celebrating it here today. He led the effort to stake out this place in the heart of cultural Cleveland to remember not only a Polish patriot, but an American patriot, Tadeusz Kosciuszko, whose ashes give us this deep legacy of freedom. It's important that we recognize Polish contributions to the world. You know, at one time there were 10,000 people here around this statue. It's important that we do this celebration here because immigration of Poles to Cleveland was at the heart of the industrial success of our city. It supplied the labor to create the vast steel fortunes that help endow these institutions. And it was a key element in making of steel as important as iron ore and limestone. That's the reason my family arrived here in 1909 uh, from Dobrylas, Poland. And in fact, my grandfather came from a very dangerous neighborhood. We had bad neighbors. First it was the Teutonic Knights, then Russians, then it was the Russians, then it was the Tsar, uh, but we arrived in Cleveland because of jobs and because of the desire for freedom. The industrial Cleveland is largely gone, but the Poles are contributing today to the medical, scientific, artistic, and engineering fields in our city. As a judge of the housing court, I see challenges every day. It's a great challenge. was highlighting, well, Cleveland, you know, other cities have had this, but what's different about Cleveland? It's that pushback, that Polish spirit of pushing back, and in fact, of Tony Brancatelli and his leadership in deciding that we're just not going to take things as they are. In fact, I shared with this reporter from the New York Times a book on Warsaw, and how Warsaw had been completely destroyed and rebuilt. Could we do no less for Cleveland? They rebuilt Warsaw brick by brick, starting with wheelbarrows. And this reporter uh, from the New York Times was so impressed with Cleveland, he had a feature article on it. Now, we're drawn here by our Polish spirit. The Constitution recognized that Polish spirit. And I want to thank all of you for carrying that on, because this Polish spirit lives on you and in the hearts of all of Polonia. Thank you so much. Dziękuję bardzo.